for your presence. Yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. There's joy in his house. <laughs> There's joy in the heavens. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Father, we just thank you.
chapter 53, verse 4, as we just sung there before, it says this, it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we're healed. Dear church, I already believe that this morning that the power of God is here to heal. And the power of God is here to bring freedom, to bring liberty. And, and, and as we continue to worship, if there's anybody here this morning that needs healing, if there's anybody uh, this morning that really needs a breakthrough or a miracle, I want to encourage you to stretch out your hand, to lift up your hand. And, and if there's somebody next to you with their hand, they put up, why don't you just lay hands on them? Why don't you just uh, put, put a hand on their shoulder and, and just encourage them and pray with them? Come on, church, we're gonna we're gonna declare this morning, we're gonna believe for healing, we're gonna believe for miracles, we're gonna believe that God's gonna come and bring right here. Come on, let's right now if you need a moment, why don't you just lift up your hands, God? God, this morning we just thank you, God, that your power is gonna heal, God. God, we just thank you, God, now that by your stripes we heal, God. And in your word that you say, if we lay hands on the sick, God, they will be healed. And so, God, this morning we just take authority of any any sickness, God. and you'd have your way. God, you'd speak to us, you'd change us, God, you would transform us, God. In Jesus' name, we all proclaim. Everybody see it? Amen. Amen. Hey, it's so good to have you guys here this morning. You guys can grab a seat. Kids, if you're still around, power zone and voltage has started. You can head straight out there now. It's going to be an awesome program. So exciting. Uh, if, if you don't know where it is, there's somebody at the back that can lead you and guide you there. Uh, I just want to say a special, very special welcome uh, to anybody who's visiting with us this morning. If you're here for the first time, or maybe just a guest traveling up, we'd love to say a special welcome to you. Uh, if you're here for the first time, why don't you just pop up your hand, and somebody would see you, they want to give you some information about the church, and, uh, and give you a little folder, and, uh, and in that folder there's a, a voucher for a coffee and a muffin or a piece of cake. Uh, we'd love to meet you in our guest lounge, which is, as you exit the door, it's just on the right, you'll be able to see it there, it's well signed, posted. Uh, I encourage you and, and invite you to come there and spend some time uh, getting to know the team, and we'd love to welcome you and spend some time with you. Well, it's time, uh, part, of the, part of that service, we like to celebrate and give us some free chocolate, my main man. Benji is here with me. Uh, so if you've had a birthday or a wedding anniversary, why don't you come up and celebrate with us? We'd love to give you some chocolate. Awesome. Pass the mic. What are you celebrating with us? Well, you got a little baby called Zoe Hope. Come and, uh, come to work. Awesome, great job. I think it's four chocolates, is that right? Four chocolates, one for each. And he's got two shoes on. Come on, awesome. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. Happy birthday, man. But he's celebrating. Right. People with, two, with hats on at church, basically, in the country. The reason for this hat is that my wife of 24 years and also my hairdresser of approximately 24 years uh, has been trying to tell me for a little while she wants to resign from one of those positions. Which one would it be? <laughs> so, thank you for your 
24 years of hairdressing there. Also, it's a good patch. She's done well. Awesome, it's so exciting. Congratulations. Last Sunday when Mike Knott was here, he asked people to come forward for prayer for healing. And I just knew that something significant was going to happen. And I'd had um, complications following my surgery from just a sneeze, a simple sneeze. And I was going to go in for surgery again, probably to have that repaired. And it's all gone. Wow, awesome. Praise God. That's so awesome. Celebration of my 50th birthday last Friday. I'm going to give my friend Tisha, my husband, who organised the most amazing surprise birthday on Friday night. And thanks to my life group that were all in on it. And those of you that came, so thanks. Awesome, happy birthday. Glee. Yeah, g'day everybody. Um, had the awesome privilege of spending uh, some time with Dr. Alan Meyer the founder of the Valiant Man program. Um, I'd like to encourage everybody that signed up to do it. And uh, I'd like you to know that uh, we've got one opening paid for. Come and see me and do it. Awesome. Thanks, Lee. It's my first time at church. Wow, awesome. So good to have you here. Welcome. One more is that? Oh, Rhett, Rhett's in there. Got to get a crunchy. Yeah, come on. Congratulations. Yeah, it was my husband's birthday last week, but um, he's on parking, so I'll claim the crunchy for him. Oh, awesome. Happy birthday, Andy. Hey, um, if, if you want to uh, leave a message uh, for those that are getting baptized, there, there are some cards that you can fill in um, straight after the service and just leave an encouraging word or a scripture that God may have placed on your heart. But we want to invite uh, all those that have just been baptized, we want to invite you back up. Uh, we'd love to pray with you. Uh, and bless you and so I'm going to invite the local leadership team and, and, and Pastor Mike and also uh, the ministry team to come up uh, along with us and we're going to uh, lay some hands and, and pray for those guys just really pray God's blessing on them so if you guys can come up that would be awesome awesome you guys this spread on. Rick, do you want to come down the scene? That would be awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Come on. Hey, church, why don't we stretch our hands? Hey, why don't we pray and, and just encourage these guys? Come on. Let's pray for them. Yeah, God, we just thank you for this amazing step of faith, God, that each one of these people have taken, God. And, and God, I just pray that this step, God, would, would be an amazing witness, God, to those around them, to their friends, their family members, God. I pray that this step, God, would be significant in their walk with you, God. God, I just pray as, they, uh, as they've taken this step, they would be stepping into a new season, God. They would be stepping into a season of unparalleled fruitfulness, God. They, they would be stepping into a new season of anointing, God, or a new season in relationship and, and in nearness to you, God. God, I just really pray, God, uh, for, for clarity in their vision, God, a clarity and direction of where you've called them to uh, or where you have them right now, God. We just pray for your anointing on them, your blessing on them, and your protection on them as they go forth, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Anybody see? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, don't forget there are uh, some cards here. We'd love to uh, get, get some messages from you guys. And uh, if you have a word for them, uh, feel free to come uh, and, f and, and write in the card and, and uh, give them an encouraging word. Well, church, uh, just a couple of things. Um, this morning, Mother's Day is happening next week, which is really exciting. Some of the dads are like, oh, it's next week already. Uh, and I haven't organized something. Get on to that, man. Uh, as you came in, you would have received a little invite card for Mother's Day, a little flyer. I encourage you to, to give that to somebody uh, that is a mother uh, in your life, or maybe a mother figure, and, and invite somebody new to church. It's going to be a great service. Um, there's some awesome things planned. Pastor Mike is speaking. He's got a great word in store for us. And, and Zoe's been working on 
some awesome decoration and video stuff, and it's going to be a great service. We really encourage you and challenge you to bring some along to church. It's going to be a great one. Hey, that's it for this morning in terms of notices, but as always, make sure you check out our website, uh, www.elamchristiancenter.org.nz. It's got all the resources, anything that you need to know about the church can be found there or contact details for the church. Also, if you if you miss a message, uh, they always go up uh, on the website as well, so you can catch up and, and, and stay in tune. Obviously, we've got a live stream as well, which I encourage you uh, to to get on and, and to have a look at. Also, we've got a, two Facebook uh, connections. We've got a Facebook page and a Facebook group, and I encourage you to get connected there and stay up to date with what's happening in the life of the church and, and just to be in that community on, on, on Facebook. As we come to the time we're given, I've just got a, a, a verse that, that I that was in my reading this morning, and, and I, re- I really felt challenged by it and encouraged by it, so I want to share that with you. Uh, and it's from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, uh, starting... Uh, at verse three, it says, a, far, uh, "A farmer went out. A father, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and he was scattering the seed. And some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. Uh, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and, ch- and was choked and choked the plants." Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. You know, I don't know about you, but when I sow my seed, uh, I would like for it to fall on that last group of soil. I would like for it to, to, to fall on good soil there and, and produce a good crop. You know, any good farmer knows or any person planting knows that, that the soil that, that the seeds are planted in is what's most important that's going to produce fruit, that's going to produce a harvest. And, and I don't know about you, but when I sow financially, I, I want to sow into good soil. I want to sow into soil where, where I know it's going to produce a harvest. And, and my, my challenge and question for you this morning, is this church good soil? Is this a church where people are getting saved? Yep. Is this a church where people are getting baptized? Is this a church where, where new ministries are being birthed? Is, is this a church where, where people's lives are being turned around, where, where hope is being restored, and, and where people are getting encouraged and growing their relationship with God? Is this that kind of church? Yeah. Well, that's good to know because that's the, that, that's the sort of church that I think we are. And, and so I encourage you, this is good soil. And, and if you're part of this church, if this is where you call yourself home, why don't you begin to sow into this church? Why don't you begin to sow into good soil and, 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 and look for the harvest that God's going to bring? Is that good this morning? Awesome. God, we just thank you, God, uh, for the work that you're doing in this church, God. God, I thank you for all the lives that are being turned around. God, for, I thank you for the hope that is being restored, God. I thank you that the vision uh, that you're putting into the lives of our people, God. I thank you for all those getting baptized and, and for all those families that are represented uh, in that situation, God. God, we just pray that as we sow into this good soil, God, that we would see an amazing harvest, God. Not only for our sons and daughters, God, but for our sons, sons and daughters and for future generations, God. I thank you that our sacrifice, God, and the, and the seeds that we sow, God, is going to bear fruit, God, in eternity, God. Fruit that lasts. Yeah. In Jesus' name, we were just pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, as the, uh, the, as the ushers take up the offering, we're going to check out our screens for a, a replenish DVD promo. For those that don't know me, I work full time at the hospital just up the road as a dietitian, mainly in the office, but um, on occasions they will let me out on the people. 
Uh, Madam and I, we've been here as part of Elam Christian Centre here in Whangarei since 1998 and um, done all sorts of things, mainly been in the uh, worship team, which um, is thanks to Manila Stewart, yeah. hit me up one day, you know, both of us, and said, um, you know, can you sing? And I said, yeah, I can sing. I've done um, kapahaka. But, um, you know, she said, oh, well. I said, so, oh, yeah, I don't mind singing, I'll, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stay in the choir. And it uh, wasn't long before, you know, I moved from the choir and then on to a mic and then, uh, hello, you know, <laughs> leading. But, um, yeah, Marama and I and uh, two kids, uh, Te Rewa and um, Oranga. Um, Marama's on staff here as a uh, pastor for uh, life groups and small groups. And um, both of us, we've done our um, ministry training with, uh, with the movement, with Elam. And we're on what you might say is on probation, so I'm going to be really well behaved here this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some know the truth. <laughs> Today is the final part in our series made for this. We believe that God has made each one of us unique with a plan and purpose. And because of that, there are certain things that God has made us for. In part one, we are made for Fano for community for family. In part two, we talked about we are made for generosity. In three, we are made to encounter God. And today in part four, we are made for maturity. Very good. Let's pray. <laughs> Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for what you've done in, in our service today. We thank you, Jesus, that you came in flesh as a man, that you lived without sin, you sacrificed your life, your blood was shed, your body was broken. You died and rose again that we might have abundant life, that we might have freedom. We thank you, God, for freedom in this place. Yeah. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to do what only you can do. Yeah. Work in us this morning. In Jesus' name, <coughs> amen. amen. I grew up going to Elam Christian Centre in Blenheim. And growing up as a kid, I always it didn't matter what stage I was in, what age group, I always wanted to be older. I always thought if I was older, life would be so much better. During primary school, you know, during primary school, you have older cousins, I had an older brother, an older sister, you know, and you just want to get your license. You know, you want that freedom. But then once you get your license, you're driving mum and dad's car and you just want your own car. You know, during primary school, I just wanted to be in high school. Then when I got into high school, I just wanted to go to uni. You know, I wanted to be 18 and do whatever I liked. I wanted that freedom, I wanted freedom from my parents. But when I got to uni, I just wanted to be working. As I got older and moved from one stage to the next, I realised it meant I needed to change. Change on the inside, change behaviours, change attitudes, change a whole lot of things. And mature as more and more responsibility came in and expectations increased. With getting older, you know, I know I could get Botox, but look at this face. Does it need me Botox? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you know, or perhaps, you know, perhaps I could get a tuck here and there. <laughs> perhaps even maybe, maybe an implant <laughs> to accentuate a few places. <laughs> but you know, none of that is going to change it. You know, none of that's going to stop me from getting older. And growing up, I realised there was nothing I could do to stop getting older. Getting older is a given. But maturing, changing on the inside, changing behaviour, changing attitudes, that's not a given. Maturity isn't a given. In order to mature, there's always things to work on. And especially if you know me, things I need to do to continually change and mature. 
I've realized growing, changing, and maturing in order to be more and more like Jesus requires me on a daily basis to be honest with myself, to take personal responsibility, focus, and with purpose work at things. Everything that is created gets older. Getting older is given. It's a short thing, but only certain things mature. Not everything matures. We are made to mature, and that requires each and every one of us to grow and change in order to be more and more like Jesus. Final, if you haven't figured it out yet, each one of us, we are all on a lifelong journey of growth and development and maturing. We were made to mature. God made each one of us. He designed us, chose us, and desires that each one of us would mature. And that requires each and every one of us to be honest and take responsibility for ourselves. You know, at the beginning of our Christian journey, when each and every one of us come to that realisation, you know, that we've all stuffed up, we've all done wrong, and we all fall short of God's standard, when we realise, you know, that Jesus came, that we might have life, and all that we simply need to do is acknowledge him and acknowledge our sin, and accept him as our Lord and Saviour. Invite him into our life to lead and guide us. You know, when that happens, we're termed born again. It's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Our spirit has been made alive. And in that way, we are like a baby. You know, like a physical baby that's newborn. But we're a Krishna, a baby Christian. And from that day onwards, just like a physical baby, in each of our lives journey and relationship with God, we are made to mature. Day by day, on a journey of growth, of change and maturing. There's a Māori proverb which I learned as I was growing up, which is, I've only just realised in the last 10 years, it's actually based off a, a verse in the Bible. It's based on 1 Corinthians 13, 11. I'll go through that Māori proverb and then go through what that means in that verse. In 1 Corinthians 13, 11, this is exactly what it says, and it's what I just said in Māori. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Let's be clear, maturity has got nothing to do with being boring or becoming boring. But if you aren't growing, if you aren't changing, if you aren't maturing, mm, then something's not quite right. There is a problem because we are made for maturity. That's exactly how God designed us. It's exactly how God created us to grow, to develop, and to mature. Just have a look at your notes or on the screen. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Verses 5 through to 9, this is what it says. Do your best to improve your faith. Whose faith? Your faith. You can do this by adding goodness, understanding, self-control, patience, devotion to God, concern for others, and love. If you keep growing this way, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. But if you don't grow, you're like someone who is nearsighted or blind, and you have forgotten that your past sins are forgiven. Get this, Peter is saying, do your best to improve your faith. It's not saying that somebody else should do it. It's not saying that your wife, your husband, or your partner, or your mama, your mum, or your papa, your dad should do it. It doesn't say that your brother or sister should do it. It says that you should do it. Each one of us has a personal responsibility to improve, to grow, and to develop and mature. In this section of Second Peter, it talks about seven virtues to develop and grow in as a focus for improving your faith. Goodness, understanding, self-control, Patience, 
devotion to God, concern for others, and love. In Luke 2, verse 52, it says, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favour with God and all the people. This verse is so amazing, so awesome. Even Jesus never stopped growing. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favour with both God and all the people. Perhaps the most challenging indication of maturity is not only what's mentioned in the section of 2 Peter, but also in Galatians 5 and verses 22 and 23, where the fruit of the Spirit are mentioned. It says in those verses, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, how are you going? How are you doing? <laughs> how are you going at allowing God, allowing the Holy Spirit to grow and develop you, to show the fruit of the Holy Spirit through you? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and last but not least, I think for me, one of the hardest ones, self-control. You know, I grew up, I mentioned I grew up going to Nelham Church, and um, we learned the fruit of the Spirit to this, to one of the craziest tunes, you know, as you do when you're a kid. So crazy. And there's no way, there's no way I'm going to sing it. No No way. That would almost, hey, that would almost be as bad as singing country. <laughs> okay. You know, all throughout the scriptures, there's a massive, massive appeal for each and every one of us, a real strong urge and push for us to continue to grow, to continue to develop and mature. Whānau, the Bible is clear that we never really arrive unfortunately, until we truly arrive. Mm. We're in a constant process of growth and development, weakness to strength, infancy to maturity, growing and developing bit by bit to be more and more like Jesus, bit by bit allowing the Holy Spirit to work more and more in us, change us, mature us. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God, are the children of God. Beautiful. You know, if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, we're one of God's children. And God's children, as it says in this verse, are led by the Spirit of God. We are made for maturity. Let me give you some thoughts about maturity. Mature people take responsibility. Mature people find solutions. And mature people reproduce. So let's go through each of those three points just in a bit more detail. Mature people take responsibility in feeding themselves. Feed yourself on what you need for your growth and development as a Christian. You know, in your relationship with God and growing and developing to be more and more like Jesus. You need to know that not everything you need for your spiritual growth in order for you to mature. Not everything that you need are you going to get from what happens here on a Sunday? As good as it is. And not everything you need for your spiritual growth will come from your life group. Although it would probably be a real benefit if each and every one of you were in a life group. You know, in a life group, we can encourage each other, we can push each other, we can challenge each other to mature. You must take responsibility for your own growth. And that means taking responsibility to feed yourself. You know, we've got a new baby in the house, Zoe Hope Devetta. But imagine if a baby forever remained a baby, where it was forever breastfed, forever remained in nappies, and kept the same sleep patterns. <laughs> As a dietitian, you know, thank God I don't work with babies and kids, but I know 
that breast milk is the sole source of nutrition will only sustain a healthy baby for four to six months max. And then after that, needs change. The need for a greater range of nutrients is needed. And that's where the mix, you know, still, as a baby, still on breast milk, mainly breast milk, but the right solids begins. Take responsibility and find other meals to sustain, to grow, develop and mature. You know, start a Bible reading plan. Read some books. There's a great, you know, there's a number of books out in the foyer which are available to borrow. You know, borrow from within your life group. Do an online study, listen to podcasts and sermons. There's all sorts of things that we can do to take responsibility to feed ourselves. You're made for maturity. If you spend your life just eating one type of food, now I know men love meat, you know, a man's meal is, you know, it's a, uh, really all we need is a bit of steak that's probably about as thick as your finger, your little finger, and probably just about the size of your palm. But, um, you know, what we eat is, is generally a good size steak, you know, just the average one, which is about two hands, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you get one that's about that thick. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that's a man's no, meal, and then it's got that little, that little bit of colour, that little garnish on the side. You know, just a bit of colour there, just to make the plate, you know, give it that, uh, that look. But, um, you know, if we, if we just ate one type of food, over a period of time we'd become deficient in a number of nutrients. And that would physically, it would affect, well not just physically, it would, it would affect, us, affect us mentally as well, but it would affect our overall well-being. And it's similar for us spiritually. Diversity, variety and balance are key for not only your physical well-being, but your spiritual well-being. It's important what we feed ourselves with. And our Christian walk is not just, say, one author, one preacher, one type of music, but I advise you, never country. (laughs) Keeping balanced and getting variety and diversity. You see, I love country. eh? You know, keeping balanced and getting variety and diversity in what you feed yourself It leaves room to be challenged, stretched, pushed, and ultimately to grow, mature, and be strengthened. Now just think for a moment. What are you lacking in? What would you benefit from by adding to your spiritual diet? What could you partake in that will help you to grow and mature? You are made for maturity. My second thought about maturity is, mature people find solutions to problems. You know, mature people, they're able to see what needs to be improved, you know, and come up with ways in which to improve the situation. We've got two kids. Te Rewa, she's 18, and almost every day she's telling us she's 18 and she can do what she likes. <laughs> and Oranga, he's 10, but he's going on 17. <laughs> no, our kids are, are really, really awesome and such a blessing. Although sometimes, sometimes, this is what I get. Oh, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. There's nothing on TV. And we've got Sky. <laughs> or it's, you know, Papa, what's to eat? There's nothing to eat. There's no towels. I've got no clothes to wear. And I'm like, eh, what? Come on. Or you might, you might hear me say, excuse me. <laughs> Mature people see problems and find solutions. Mature people own who and what we're all about as Elam Christian Centre North. You know, one of four campuses, one church, four campuses. Mature people own why we do what we do and how we do what we do. Mature people ask questions. Mature people desire to know why we do what we do. You know, they ask the questions and they own things for themselves. They buy into things, not because they think they have to, but because they know and they want to. Mature people want, would rather serve than be served. Mature people come on a Saturday ready to serve others in a genuine and real way, pumped up, ready to go, 
ready to make this place rock. There's so many of you that do that. You know, so that more and more people can be added to God's whānau. Jesus came to serve rather than to be served. Radical. The king came to serve rather than be served. And we're all called to be more and more like Jesus. One of our roles as a leadership is to serve you, to activate you, to push you, in order to mature you. As a church, are we all that we should be? Are we all that we could be? Certainly not. Are there things we don't get right? Heck yes. But would you be part of the solution? No, in the Bible it talks about for a body to function effectively, it takes each one doing their part. Would you be part of the solution? You know how we can tell that someone is all in? They not only can identify problems, but they come with possible solutions. Mature people find solutions and work to make a better future. They are part of the solution. And here's my third thought about maturity. Mature people reproduce. You know, when things mature, they also begin to reproduce themselves. When you think about it, it doesn't take long before a flower matures to produce seed that reproduces. Whānau, since you and I are made for maturity, that means that we have a responsibility to be reproducing what Christ has done in us and someone else. You know, I'm thankful over the years for the many life groups that we've been in. We've been in all sorts of life groups. I'm thank you for, you know, those who are more mature in the faith that have got alongside us as a whānau, alongside me and Marama, and, you know, really supported us. You know, ones like Eileen, and, um, you know, we used to have some crazy life groups. Marama and I used to be the, the youngest in our life group, and we used to be with, you know, all sorts of older, but, uh, you know, the benefit for us is that they were actually a lot more mature and able to help us. It says in, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. In Matthew 28, verse 19, it says, it talks about our great commission. Our great commission is, it's what? It's to go, what is it? To go and know? To go and know more? Certainly not. It's to go and make disciples. It's to go and reproduce. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Great Commission is about reproducing. It's about making disciples. You know, discipleship is really important. It's not just a course. Discipleship is a tool. Discipleship, discipleship is you saying to someone, come and follow me. I'll invest in you and grow you and help you to mature on your journey. Father, let's take what God has done in our lives and sow into someone else's life that they too might grow, mature and bear fruit. We are made for maturity. Can I just have the, the band, the team come up? Father, God created you. God designed you. God chose you. And he has an incredible plan for your life. And a key part of that design, a key part of how God has made us, is that we would grow, develop, and mature. For you to be more and more like Jesus. The Bible is clear that it is God who causes you to grow, develop, and mature. You know, God designed us. God created us. God also gave us a free will. It's essential we play our part. It's essential that we're honest and take responsibility. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. I know as we do this, as we are honest with ourselves, 
and allow God to show us, to work in us, day by day, as we take personal responsibility, while we also support each other and our life groups, you know, push each other, challenge each other to maturity. I know that in 2015, it will be an amazing, exciting, and powerful year. As we focus on our own growth, as we focus on maturity, you know, our ability to reach, serve, and influence Whangarei, it's going to go to another level. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for how you have designed us, how you have created us. I thank you that you made each and every one of us for maturity. Lord God, I thank you for your hand of blessing upon us. I thank you, Lord, that each one of us desires, Lord God, that you would show us, that you would lead and guide us, that you would mature us, that you would change us to be more and more like your son, Jesus. Church, as we just remain with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, you know, perhaps you've come here today, it may be your first time, you may have been coming along here for a number of times, but maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. In a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer, and if, if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, just pray along with me. You know, each one of us is stuffed up, each one of us has done wrong, but the awesome thing is, all we need to do is come to God and say sorry. Ask Him to come into our lives. Ask Him to be our Lord and Saviour. Ask Him to come, be with us, lead us and guide us and change us to be more like Him. If you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, just pray along with me. God, I come to you today. I admit that I've done wrong. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Saviour. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Lead me, guide me, change me to be more like you. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just as we continue with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer with me, if you accepted Jesus today as your Lord and Saviour for the first time, or perhaps you're coming back and renewing your relationship with God, if that was the first time for you today, if you prayed that prayer with me, just lift your hand. We'd like to acknowledge the decision that you've made today. Just lift your hand. Thank you there. Awesome. Just lift your hand and acknowledge that decision that you've made. We've got a team that will come after the service and just speak with you and pray with you and uh, if you need a Bible I'll give you one just lift your hand if you today accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour so awesome that's great, that's awesome awesome alright that's great Alrighty, thank you. Adrian, I'll hand it back to you. Come on, mate. I know that in my life, one of the most important things uh, in a journey um, of maturity is having someone that challenges you, having someone that encourages you, having someone that, that is doing the journey of life with you. And so I encourage you, you know, if you've been challenged by the word, we've got a, a ministry team that would love to pray with you and encourage you. And, and I, I would encourage you to, to, to count for that. But why don't we just stand? We're going to continue to praise and worship. We're going to finish with one more song. Uh, and uh, at the info booth as well, they'd they love to be able to connect you in with a life group that, that might help you um, and, and challenge you. But come on, church, just stand up. We're going to praise. Come on.
take a flyer. It's going to be a great service. If you've been impacted by this message, don't forget we've got a ministry team who would love to pray with you. You know, the, the reason we call it an altar call is it's because it's a call to altar. Uh, and so come on, and if your God is calling you to altar this morning, why don't you come up and get some ministry. Don't forget uh, to grab an invite card, invite someone to church, and don't forget to be a center of hope to reach and influence our community. Bless your church. Have an awesome weekend. Enjoy the test.